how the way that you invest when you're 30 is different than the way that you invest when you're 60 or 65. The big thing is, is at some point you have to start pulling money out. Welcome to Barry's Bites. Please join our host, attorney and financial advisor, Chris Barry. Two different retirements. And what this is expressing is what's called a sequence of return risk. So we have two different retirements. Jane retires in 2010, Jill retires in 2000. And let's assume they both have $500,000 of IRA money. What is the difference? So again, the difference is the market return. And if they invest exactly the same way in the markets, and we assume that they both need $30,000 annually to cover their income gap. Jane retired in 2010, and if we look at the market return, pretty darn good, 2010 to 2019, right? So a 12% return, but we still have to make the withdrawal. And, and that's the big thing. That's the thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you're in an accumulation phase and while you're working, it's all about saving as much as you can. But once you retire, now it's all about preservation and figuring out that distribution plan. And the big thing is that now we have to start pulling money from these accounts. And so the tools and maybe even advisors and people you work with for the accumulation side, that's a different skill set than the preservation and distribution side. And that's really what we focus on. So now Jane has to take this money out. But you see with these mostly positive returns, she's left with in 2019, so about 10 years later, $874,000. And this is just tracking the S&P 500. So this is real life. So assuming that she just was tracking the S&P 500, she'd be left with $874,000 with this $30,000 withdrawal per year. Now let's switch it around. Let's take a look at Jill, who retired in 2000. Now, if you remember, 2000... 2000 to 2009, not as good in terms of returns. Down 10, down 13, down 23. We had 26. The big thing here is you look at all of these negative returns right in the beginning, plus the withdrawals that we have to make. We don't have a chance for the money to rebuild. And so she was left with $96,000. Again, invested exactly the same way. I'm not saying you should just put everything in the S&P in retirement, but if we have the same $500,000, both withdrawing $30,000 a year, look at the difference just based on what years they retire. And so this is what we're talking about is sequence of return risk. If we have a lot of negative returns right around retirement age, you don't have time to build it back. The way that you invest when you're 30 should be different than the way that you invest when you're 60. So that's just looking at time. Now what I'm going to do is share another slide. And this is looking at the same exact returns just flipped around. So what we have here is two different scenarios. So we have a scenario while we're working and the scenario while we're working here is that we don't have to pull any money out. So this first scenario is during accumulation phase. And really what we're saying here is that let's say we have $100,000 and we're going to assume an average return of 6% over 10 years. And we're going to have Miss Lucky and Mr. Unlucky. Now this is during working years. So there's no withdrawals. We're not pulling any money out. And if we Take an average of these 10 years. So first year, it's up 30, up 20, up 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, then down 20, down 30. This averages out over 10 years to be 6%. And if we look at the amount we put in, $100,000, after year one, we have $130,000 because it gained $30,000 because of the 30% gain. The ending value is 130. Then we add on the 20%. That's another 26,000. That's 156. And we go down the line and we get to the negative returns and we're left with 154,000 in change. Now, Mr. Unlucky, all we're doing is flipping around the order, the sequence of the returns. So we have those negative returns in the beginning and the positive returns in the end. Well, let's jump down to the bottom still at $154,000. So what this is illustrating is during your accumulation phase, before retirement, before you have to start pulling money, what it's illustrating is let's compare this to what happens when we retire and we need to start pulling money out of the different accounts, because that's really what retirement is. It's not about the accumulation. You've done a great job of accumulating wealth. Now it's about preservation and distribution. So the only thing we're going to change is that we have to pull out $6,000 per year is 6% of the initial value. So that is the only thing that's going to change. So again, we have $100,000 going in. 
Mr. Lucky, 30% gain. That's 130. We still got to subtract the 6,000 because that's the living expenses. We're left with 124. Mr. Unlucky, $100,000. Uh oh, it dropped 30%. So now we're left with 70,000. We still have to take out 6,000. We're left with 64,000. Now, if we look, scroll down all the way to year 10, Miss Lucky, who has the positive returns in the front, is left with $105,000. Mr. Unlucky, who had the negative returns in front, is left with 38,000. What I'm trying to illustrate here is just that this is one of the risks. Market volatility in retirement is much bigger of an issue than it is while you're working. Both of these, again, is averaging a 6% rate of return over 10 years. It's just the sequence of those returns. So what I'm talking about here is as we move, get closer and move into retirement, we need to be cognizant about this, that we're going to have to start pulling money and we don't want to be pulling money from down accounts. A lot of times as we move into retirement, it's not so much about hitting home runs. It's about protecting everything that you've worked so hard for. At Castle Wealth Group, we talk about protecting against taxes. Like, what is your IRA exit strategy, given the taxes are going up? How can we protect against long-term care costs, which can run ten dollars to $15,000 a month these days? And then as we move into retirement, this is another concern, market volatility. How can we protect ourselves or insulate ourselves from sequence of churn risk? And there's a variety of different strategies and tools that we can use to do it. But if you're nearing retirement, this is something that should be kind of top of mind for you as one of the things that we need to protect against. 